Okay, um, it's my, my pleasure to be here uh, to talk about a research initiative that uh, myself and then several colleagues of mine uh, in the translation division in the civil engineering department. Um, most of us are working on decision support tools for a long time and then we join together and make this proposal trying to develop disaster management framework for railway system. And what we're trying to do and what I'm going to present today is to show you some of the research gaps we identify and then think uh, can uh, be done or can be uh, uh, possible topics in the future and then on the disaster management. Just to give you some overview, if you have been to Taipei, most likely you've been to Taipei Main Station. If you go to Taipei Main Station, you go to the platform for the Taipei Metro, you may see this mark. This mark tells you in 2001, there's a narrow uh, typhoon and then makes uh, a big flooding and then submerge the whole station. So it's somewhere over here, that's the height of the water. To give you another different perspective, uh, Taipei sta uh, Main Station looks like this. And this is the uh, metro lines. And then what you have seen is somewhere over here. So all the metro lines submerge into water. And this part is the high-speed rail and also the conventional railway. Let me give you another photo about this part. That's what I've seen. So it's a, it's a really devastating time. And then uh, the, uh, there, are, there are so many natural disasters going through Taiwan uh, 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 every year. And then so this is something we are constantly facing, constantly thinking, how can we do better? So besides a Typhoon Nari, I'll give you some of the other views uh, to show you the nature disaster. For example, this is the Typhoon Morocco in 2009. This Typhoon uh, 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 gave us a torrential rain. Uh, I, I think it's still the maximum record uh, uh, so far. It's a 1,400 millimeter in one day, and then 2,000 millimeter in two days. So it washed out the infrastructure of the Ali San Mountain Railway. So that's what you have seen over there still today still under construction and then under repair. Because every so often we repair certain part of that and another typhoon came, another damage to the system. And then so it takes a long time uh, to really repair or complete the project. And this is the earthquake in Kaohsiung, uh, Kaohsiung area, southern Taiwan, and derailed uh, our uh, high-speed rail train. And it's a landslide in 2013, uh, actually derail, derail our conventional railway. So uh, when, we, when we first think about what can we do for disaster management, and of course we look into other stages. I think all of you are experts in this area, and then so what we're trying to do is trying to understand what are the work uh, regarding preparedness, what are the work regarding the response right after the disaster, what is the recovery, what is the mitigation. So we look into all these stages and think about how can we build uh, 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 useful tools and then for, for, for disaster management and then uh, together with our expertise. So first thing we, we look into is like, what can we do? And usually when we think about disaster management, we think about sensors, especially I'm a civil engineer. So civil engineering department is always talking about sensors, more advanced sensors. So we can have a sense for landslide, sensors for earthquake, sensor for rockfall, sensor for heavy rain, flooding, all kinds of sensors. But these sensors will give you warning, will give you an early indication, and give you the information. Perhaps you can gain a little bit more time and then uh, uh, right before the disaster. And what we're trying to do, because we're in the transportation, we're mostly looking to a soft engineering, software-wise uh, solution. So what we're trying to do is, how can we use our expertise to really help on the disaster management? So what we identify is, you know, we can build possible simulation tools, prediction tools, and also decision support tools to supporting a disaster management. And then that's something we identify. For simula simulation-wise, we think there's a platform needed to really understand uh, the, the operations and then really behaviors uh, during the disaster. That's something I will talk about later. So simulation, um, uh, integrated simulation is really needed to really understand all the operations during the disaster. And the prediction, prediction model is also very important. And there are, there are so many things you need to predict uh, during the, the disaster. And also, this is a very key tool. You have to deal with the incomplete field data. So whenever we try to make a decision during the disaster, of course, it's very nice if I can know all the information, but it is not possible. Just simply think about how can we send the rescuing people to the particular site. Or if I don't have the real data of the infrastructure, I don't know the, the condition of the infrastructure, then how can, what can I do? How can I really send my evacuation team, my rescuing team very efficiently? So we need to have some kind of tool to deal with this kind of incomplete field data. And then finally, of course, uh, all this preparation is trying to make 
a better decision. So we can also build decision support tool, trying to identify the best practices. If we identify identify one, we can do that for the uh, for the drill, for the for the for the preparedness, preparedness, or also during the disaster, we can make some real time uh, decision support. So that's what we're trying to identify. And in the following slide, I'm going to show you a little bit more detail about the concept for each one of them, and also follow an example uh, related to that. So simulation, this is a part uh, where we think if we try to understand other scenarios, trying to understand the operations, we need to have an integrated simulation model. Of course, there are simulation trying to simulate the nature disaster, or possibly for mainline railway operations, or some of the simulation does the station operations, like a passenger flow inside the stations. And then there are also access operations, it means you need other transport means get into the station or getting out from the station. And then also the rescuing operations. They are uh, simulation existing for maybe one of them or, or maybe two of them. But we haven't seen a really integrated simulation can really take care out of them and understand the whole picture. So what we're trying to think is that this should be the goal. We're trying to, we should actually integrate the simulation tools and trying to imitate the system operations under chosen strategies and all the settings. settings. So that's what we, 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 we that's our, our, our plan and our, our, our proposal. And to, to give you a very uh, small example, uh, this is one of the example that uh, my, uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Zhu and Professor Cheng has done before. They try to integrate the simulation of the fire and also the pedestrian flow, uh, passenger flow uh, inside the platform. So they're trying to combine these two together to understand how uh, the, the passengers will actually evacuate uh, during this kind of operations. But this is just a very simple example. To really integrate out of them, that requires a lot of time, requires a lot of resources to really build the model. But this is what we're thinking about. Another thing, we, another point we're trying to point out that uh, my colleague, when they work on this kind of particular project, is they're really thinking about can we provide changeable sign? Can we provide dynamic pedestrian information display system? Because nowadays, most of the sign, they're fixed. They're forever you know, pointing to the same direction. But if, if we, have, we have a more advanced technology, maybe we can have a different sign for different kind of a, a fire, different kind of, uh, for example, uh, different kind of uh, evacuation, a different place, a different location of the fires, we can give different information uh, to the passengers. Okay, so the next one is prediction. And as I mentioned before, there are a lot of things we have to predict and then during the disasters. So of course, we have to predict the probability or a progression of the natural disaster. But very importantly, we need to understand how the infrastructure, infrastructure will, respond, will respond to the natural disaster. And as I mentioned before, if we have the way to really uh, predict the response, then we can know that well, what is the most efficient way to sending our rescuing team. And then to really think about evacuation, there are two ways for ev evacuation. A lot of time we'll talk about how to evacuate people, victims from the particular site out. But don't forget, we need to also send rescuing team into it. So there, there are two directions. So how can we really match, manage this? So how can we make this more efficient? So infrastructure wise, we have to also make some kind of prediction. And then of course, passenger, how would passenger, how would actually uh, uh, affected uh, victims uh, responded to this kind of condition and how the rescuer will actually get into uh, the, the system. So another uh, small example, this is actually done by my, uh, co uh, my colleague, Professor Chen. Uh, he, he has done this in the States when they are work, uh, working on the tornado. So whenever there's a tornado, they actually identify what other uh, risk zones, and then different zones will have a different kind of a threat, different kind of risk. And for different zones, people in different area, they're trying to send out different evacuation indications. So that's what they're, they're trying to do. And also, they try to understand the behavior of the evacuee, because whenever you, you send the signal, send the indication, they may not really respond. There are people um, making different kind of judgment during different times. So this is for this part. We need to have a good integrating, uh, integrated prediction model. And the, the third one is really the decision support model. Decision support model uh, can be used uh, in, uh, in the preparation or uh, when you have a disaster. During the disaster, we can uh, be used for the real-time um, real decision making. So I, I give you an example. Nowadays, when we are uh, uh, talking about new modern buildings, usually these buildings is built together with the building information model. This building information model identifies the exit of the building, okay, and then the routes, the layout of the building. Also, it tells you the material. Okay, why is the material important? 
For example, if there's a fire, we need to know how fire resistant this material is. So whenever we're thinking about what is the right route for evacuation, it's not just about shortest path. It's about also what is the fire risk. It's also about how congested the system is. So you need to really think about all this to identify the right path. So here's just an example. So if you have all this information, first, of course, you have to identify where the exit is. And next, you have to identify all the passes. And then, of course, for different people in different areas, you should you, you can provide them the information. What is the, what is the optimum path? And then, as I mentioned before, for example, if it's a fire, we have to consider the fire risk, consider distance, and also consider the congestions uh, for, for this kind of evacuation. So the, the last example I want to show you is, this is a, a one thing uh, Professor Chen, my colleague, has done for Taipei Main Station as an example. In this map, you can see the fire simulation is already over here. It's one of the floor in Taipei Main Station. And then uh, the yellow dots representing the, uh, the, 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 the evacuee, people trying to evacuate from this place. And then the red lines representing the, doubt, the, the routes. And what we're trying to propose is that we, we, we should give people in different places different information. We, we shouldn't always tell them, you go there, you go there. Or, or I mean, I'm sorry, always tell them, go to one place, just evacuate to a certain, certain, certain exit, a certain port. Actually, if, if we can give them different information, then they can go different way, and then this may be more efficient. In the past, this sounds you know, impossible, but nowadays, think about it. We have a smartphone, everyone has a smartphone. If you go to Tokyo Station, the complicated station, you can have an internal navigation system, indoor navigation system. This kind of platform can also be used for evacuation. So as long as you have the platform, as, you, as long as you have the distinguishable tool to identify the path, that can be sent to your smartphone and you can look at your smartphone and being guided uh, to, uh, to the safe place. So that's what we're trying to uh, propose. So uh, throughout the simulation, prediction, optimization, we're trying to create this framework and then for disaster man management. So we think with a good tools and then good database, this tool should be effective and more effective in the future and then for disaster man management. And that's what I want to share with you. Thank you. Thank you.